Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. Quick little experimentation video here. The card you see inside this test bench right here, this one, is an IBM EGA card, the original IBM EGA card. And it can have an optional memory module plugged onto the top of the card, connects here to this connector, and that expands this card. Right now, this just has the stock RAM on it, which is 64K reported right here by Check It Video RAM Size 64K. When you plug the expansion module in, that expands this card to a total of 256K. Not having the full 256K of RAM on this card gives you some limitations. This here is 320 by 200, which is CGA style resolution, and it's running at a full 16 colors. This is opposed to CGA which can only do four colors. So having the 64K on here does give you this enhanced memory mode. It also gives you 640 by 200 at 16 colors as well, which on an actual CGA adapter, this would be a one color mode, basically monochrome. But where you're missing out with the additional colors is the 640 by 350 resolution, which is the native resolution of EGA running at 16 colors. All this amount of RAM allows you to do is get four colors, which are like the CGA colors in this high resolution mode. Games like the original SimCity actually can use the 640 by 350 high resolution mode of EGA and run at the full 16 colors. So this IBM card as it sits right here without the RAM expansion would not be able to run SimCity at that high color mode. You'd end up having to run it in probably CGA or one of the lower resolutions. Now, if we take a look at the actual card right here, the RAM itself is right here. These four chips and these four chips. These eight chips make up the 64K. But unlike the standard 64K chips that most people are familiar with, the ones like on a 64, which are 64K by one bit each, so you need eight chips to equal 64K of eight bit memory, these are actually 4416 chips which means that each one of these chips has 16K by four bits. So when you have two of these chips together, you end up with 16K by eight bits. So 16K, 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 and 16K for a total of 64K. Now the RAM expansion card that goes over this board also works in a very similar way using these 4416 chips. From my understanding, EGA is bit plane graphics where it has different bit planes. So it's not just a normal bitmap memory, it's actually bit plane. Meaning that these custom ICs here that IBM designed access these 16K banks at the same time. So this type of memory really suits itself to this EGA adapter. Now, if you have one of these EGA cards and you have the RAM expansion card, just stick it on there and you're gonna have 256K and you'll be great. You'd be able to run everything on the card. But I don't have that expansion card. And I was thinking about ways to possibly expand this card without using that expansion card from IBM, since at this point, it's probably relatively hard to find. Now with these 4416 chips, there is actually a possibility of doing an upgrade without making any modifications to this board. There's another type of chip called the 4464, which has an identical pinout to these, but you might think, how is that possible without having any extra pins? Well, it's possible because the way DRAM like this works is there are eight address lines, and first, whatever's controlling the DRAM sets those eight address lines, and it pulses the row address select line, the RAS line. And then it sets those, those address lines again, and it sets the column address select line, CAS. On the first RAS set, it is using all eight address lines, but on the second for the 16K, these chips only look at the six address lines and they ignore the top two. But if you use the 4464 chips, it looks at all eight address lines. So there's actually precedent for being able to swap out these chips on some devices and have it just work at 64K. Commodore 128 is one such example. It uses two of these chips for 16K for the video memory for the 80 column mode, the RGB output on the C128. Well, on that computer, if you just swap them out with the 4464s, magically, the machine has 64K of video memory. It can see and address all of that. 
But there's also precedent for that not working. And the Commodore 16 is another good example of that. It also uses two of these chips for its 16K. And if you just swap them out with 64K chips, the computer still has 16K. And that's because the, the RAM multiplexer that drives those chips on that machine, it just doesn't have those additional address lines wired up to them. And you need to cut a couple traces and run a couple bodge wires to allow the multiplexer to know about those higher address lines so that it properly drives the RAS and the CAS lines. Looking at the schematics for the IBM EGA card, these LSI chips here, which are large scale integration chips, they're generating and driving the DRAM directly. So there's no way to basically tell these chips, hey, these are now 64K chips. But it's quite possible that IBM designed this board to be able to work with both 16K and 64K chips and swapping them out might work. So I have the desoldering iron here, I have some sockets here, and I have some 64K chips to borrow off this VGA card. These are the type, the same type that would go on here. So I can give this a test and we can see if this upgrade actually works. I did quite a bit of Googling, looking around to see if anyone ever talked about doing this upgrade and I couldn't find anyone talking about it. So I guess I'm gonna try this out here and see what happens. Worst case scenario, it doesn't actually upgrade the RAM and I'll just put the original chips back in and they will be socketed for the future if one of them ever dies. So it's time to warm up the desoldering iron and replace these chips with these sockets and let's see if this works. All right, the RAM has been removed. All looks good on the board, no issues. Now I'm just gonna install some sockets. Okay, the card is done. 
I installed the original RAM back in, but of course it's in sockets now. And uh, it all looks good. No damage to the board. My hot air method really does the trick. It's hard to desolder off a board like this, so it has ground planes inside of it. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't attempt this unless you have a proper desoldering iron and some decent experience, you know, practice on some other boards first, just because uh, when you have the ground plane, it makes everything a little more difficult. All right, well, I guess we need to see if this thing still actually works, right? Let's give this a test. Hopefully I didn't cause any kind of damage to this thing. Let's uh, give it a try. Okay, <laughs> it does appear to be working. I'm just gonna run a quick test and check it just to make sure that it still sees its RAM and it's able to display graphics modes and things like that. And it's working. This is 640 by 200 at 16 color. So that's the highest resolution color mode that is possible with this amount of RAM and it's working. So thumbs up, no damage was caused by pulling those chips off. It's always a possibility desoldering chips. Okay, I power this off. Let's swap out the RAM with the 64K RAM right here, which I just stole off this Cirrus Logic video card. Okay, 256K of RAM is installed on this EGA card. It's gonna work, it'll power up, but the question is, will it recognize the additional RAM or will it just still think it's 64K as if it had those chips in it? All right, here we go. Aha, look at that. It's actually not working. That's really surprising that it doesn't work. Uh, this video card was working, so I'm gonna say that that RAM is actually good, but I'm fascinated that this doesn't just work as 64K. Let's let the computer boot up, I'm gonna play around, see if I could figure out, maybe it goes in to check it. I don't know, we'll see. It actually doesn't seem to be even booting, actually. I heard the drive seek. Let's turn this off and on again. Uh, you know what, this thing is actually in CGA mode, the adapter, which caused that flashing. There we go. So that's what we're actually getting here. So the drive seeked. I'm gonna pop the RAM off this video card here. See if this, uh, maybe this works better. It's a different, slightly different type of uh, RAM, same pinout and everything. But um, this uh, stuff that's on here is Samsung. What was on there was Texas Instruments. And let's just give this stuff a try. All right, let's see. Let me just double check that none of the pins are bent. Nope, everything is good. All of these ICs are in the correct direction, the right orientation in the sockets. So let's pop them out and swap over to the other ones. The ones I just put on, the ones I'm taking off here, the ones that weren't working are 120 nanoseconds. The original chips that were on there were 150. And these ones, ooh, they're 100 nanoseconds, so even faster. Okay, here's that second set of RAM. And if this doesn't work, <laughs> I'm gonna say that this card fully does not like having additional RAM installed on it. Let's see what happens. I'm anticipating the same thing. Yep, look, it looks different. How interesting. I missed it, but it's actually booting into DOS. So I could actually try to run check it and see if I can get it to do anything. Looks like there's a cursor right here. I don't think that's actually the cursor though. Oh yeah, it moved. So I guess that is the cursor. All right, so it's booted. Let's see, mode mono. Oh, I don't have mode on here, so that's not gonna work. Check it, check it. I'm running by memory here. So these LSI chips, they definitely have the ability to sort of auto detect how much RAM is on the board because when you put the RAM card on here, it just works. And I looked at the pinout, there doesn't seem to be any additional sense pins or anything to like say that the card's installed. So putting these on here, look, it didn't actually change anything. 
check it is actually running right now, but I, I don't remember how to get into the graphics test mode. I think what might be happening is with the 64K chips in here, when it does the uh, column address select line, I have a feeling it's probably just not driving those two additional address line pins, the ones that aren't used. And maybe that causes sort of random garbage to get displayed or put into memory. Perhaps the LSI chips leave those lines floating during the column address select part of the refresh cycle. I'm not exactly sure. So let me hit control alt delete. So it does reset the card, but just immediately, well, the cursor ends up being right there. So that is working. Just in case anyone is curious, I have these chips with the 16K and these are 64 down here. Let's just see if this gives you some kind of strange pseudo upgraded card. Because right now this has 32K here and this is 128K. So let's just see what kind of madness this has. Ah, look at that. At least we're getting some characters, but still garbage. What kind of makes me sad here is that this could have been a very simple user upgrade. If IBM had socketed these chips and built in support for doing this upgrade into these LSI chips, then they could have got away without having to require that expansion board. Uh, you could do it either way, potentially, but they decided to stick with these 16K chips and uh, basically require you to have this expansion module. I mean, unless there's any other technical limitation that requires all that additional RAM to be separately addressable, because basically each set of these chips is a bank, so to speak. Anyhow, okay, it's back with the original memory here. Let's just make sure that it actually works. And there it is, it's working again. So yeah, you cannot put 64K RAM chips on this board to upgrade to 256, it does not work. So let my experimentation and trying out that RAM upgrade on board be helpful to others. It's a bit of a shame that it didn't work, but you never know, might've worked and it would've been kinda cool, but IBM didn't allow it, so there we go. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, but if you didn't know what to do, this is my second channel, so get subscribed, it really helps me out. And Thanks to all my patrons who have been supporting both of my channels. It's absolutely fantastic. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, that is it. Okay. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.